everybody it has been a while since I've done a silhouette video so I thought I would show you today some of my favorite go-to tricks for editing text so this is a mock-up of a sign that I did last week you can see it's a pretty basic one just has the name Anna across the center but the text when I first type it into my software does not actually look very much like this at all so today I'm going to talk about some tricks for maybe tilting letters extending letters and even combining some of your favorite fonts together into one word to just give the design a little bit more um, dynamic and some more dimension so this is what the sign looked like once it was finished in my software just to make things a little bit easier I'm going to just get rid of the background pieces and slide them off to the side so that we really can just focus in on the text here for this part of it so I'm gonna write Anna first so I click on my text selector from the left and in any blank space and I type in Anna it's really teeny tiny at first so I'll click away and then click back on it and let's make it bigger so you can at least get a better idea of what's happening here and I liked this font for the most part I liked the ends for sure and I liked the a kind of sort of <laughs> I, the lowercase a I wasn't the biggest fan of an uppercase the uppercase a here so I'm going to click on it and make a duplicate of it and I'm going to change it to the other font that I ended up using so this first font was if you look over here on my sidebar hello honey and then this one that I'm going to change it into I'm gonna use it's called Wilshiring it's another freebie that I've had forever oops I just want this one selected and I'm gonna select all of this font over here get rid of it type in the Wilshiring and it should show up there it is so this one I liked the capital A a little bit better so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so they kind of line up a little bit better so I liked the lowercase letters here, the uppercase letter here, and I did a little bit of work to combine all of this together. So let's start with the lowercase letters. So sometimes, let me zoom in a little bit, sometimes it's easier for everyone to see exactly what I'm doing if I kind of layer them. So I'm going to leave these guys transparent for now. I'm going to slide it right up on top, and you'll see that just clicking on it and kind of pulling out the corner doesn't give me the same exact proportion um, so when I made this design a couple days ago for the sign I clearly did not make it as tall as I did wide so I'm going to shrink it back up from the bottom and make it about the same height and then I'm just going to pull out the side and you'll see how slowly those red lines are starting to match up with the blue lines underneath so I'm gonna pull it out a little bit more and you'll see here we go take a look they start to match up almost one for one this looks like I made it even a little bit wider there we go maybe slide it out a little bit more so clearly here I needed to stretch it sideways not nearly or a lot more than I needed to stretch it up and down so I've got that pretty much matched up let me get it a, even a little bit wider there we go and you can see that this is pretty much the exact same size but if you notice this N is a lot higher than um, this N and the A seems a little bit off and what happened there let me drag it down now so you can see a little bit better what happened there was when I was working with this one you can see it's just kind of like basic right like a little too straight across and I wanted a little bit more up and down to give it more of the illusion that I actually like hand lettered this because if you did your hand lettering and your your handwriting that you typically use you would never be able to get it so perfectly nice and straight 
So to do that, I just clicked on the letters and I went up here and I ungrouped them so that now my software is reading each letter individually and I just played around with them a little bit. So I clicked in a blank space. I kind of left this guy alone for the most part, but then this second N, I dropped it down a little bit and I also tilted it. Um, you can see I kind of have it tilted this way a tiny little bit. And if you want even more proof that it's tilted, you can see I can bring it up here and put it on top of this guy. So you can see that now when I tilt it, it kind of matches up a little bit better. So then I'll drag this guy back into place. And same thing with my A. This is definitely tilted some too. So you can see if I line him up this way, he's not exactly lining up with the blue one underneath. But when I tilt him this way, he lines up a lot better. So already my design certainly has a little more visual interest than it did before. So the other thing that I did was I dropped the swooshes here of the ends down a little bit more. And again, I'll slide it up here so you can see what I mean. If I put it on top of the blue one, you can see the one that comes like right out of the box is up here, but my blue one is all the way down there. So to do that, I'm going to zoom in real close so you can get a really good idea of how I do it. And then I'll go back to my pointer so I don't zoom in accidentally again. But I just click on it, double click so you can edit the points. And I pick the one that's in the middle, as close as I can get to the middle. And I just dragged it down. And at first you're like, wait, this looks crazy. Don't worry, we can get this nice and smooth by playing with the points around it. And then I just went up to the top one and did the same thing. Just kind of pulled it down so the swoosh, the swoop, was a little bit lower than where it came. So when I zoom back out, you can see I have a nice curve there. It's just down a little bit lower, which again, just gives it a, that little bit extra visual interest. And I think if I remember correctly, I did the same thing to the first one, just not quite as much. So again, I'll double click on it and I'll pull down the middle swoop, not quite as much this time. And I'll pull down the ones around it so that the curve is nice and smooth. And I'll pull down that top layer too so it's not thicker than the rest of the text. Okay, so we're off to a good start. <laughs> That's my first trick, is that you can tilt the letters around a little bit and you can play with the swooshes as much as you want. So the other thing I did was I swapped out the A. So I really liked this A a lot better than the A that came with the original script. So I'm going to ungroup these so that I can just play with the A. And again, the first thing I always do is change the proportion. So you can see this guy is really skinny compared to the one that I ended up using. So let's see if I can kind of pull out the corners and play with the proportions a little bit to get it about the same height. So it looks like I gotta go up a little bit here. He's almost the right width. It looks like I tilted him a little bit and then maybe stretched him out even a hair more. That, whoops, looks like it's almost exactly where I had it the other day, close enough. So we can drag him into place and delete out, click on the old one and get rid of that one. All right, so a couple of things. This is looking really cute already and I love it. I love this little swoop. And I was really hoping I could get the same little swoop over here on the end of the A to kind of balance out the design a little bit. I felt like this kind of left me hanging a little bit. So to do that, I have a couple tricks. I'm going to use this exact swoop. So if I click on it, just the A, and I'm going to make a copy of it, I'm going to pull it off to the side, and I'm going to zoom in on it 
and you're going to see my trick. So I really want this swoop to be the exact same swoop so that it looks like the font is meant to all go together. So I'm just going to use my knife tool right here and I'm going to cut it right off of the A. Then I'll go back to my arrow and I'll bring him over here. And now this is what I'm going to use to make the swoop on the end of the A. So it's not going to fit perfect, but we're going to play around with it. So let's zoom out and I'll drag it over here. And now I'll zoom in over there so you can see what I'm going to do with it. Let's get a little bit closer. Okay, so first things first, it's obviously not facing the same direction. No big deal. We'll go up here to object, mirror, and we will flip it around. And now we want to just put it on an angle. And if I bring it over right away, it's actually already a pretty good fit. If I zoom in a little bit more, you'll see it's just a little too skinny. See how it's just a little bit skinnier here and the um, A is wider there? Maybe if I just drag a little bit and play with the proportions a little bit, I can get it to fit even better. Let me just go like this and try to line them up a little bit more. I like that. I don't want this guy to get too fat though. So if you look up here, I think I might already be getting a little too fat. Yeah, and I don't want him to look like he doesn't really match with the font. So if you're worried about that, let's drag him back in so he's not getting too big. And we're going to learn how to edit these points a little bit more. So first thing we're going to do is zoom in. I always like to zoom really far in so you guys can see a lot better. Okay, so the easiest way to get your software to think of these as the same piece is the first thing I like to do is I just chop off this little bit of the A that's overlapping with our swoosh. So I get it lined up perfect right there. I'm going to go back to my knife tool and I'm going to chop right across here. And when I click my arrow and select that little tiny bit, I'll get rid of him. Okay, so now I'm going to take my A and my swoosh. And I'm going to go up to Object, Make Compound Path. And so my software is trying really, really hard to think of this as one piece. But if I double click to edit the points, you can see that it's kind of got like a break in the path. So if I click on either one of these two that are super close together, what's nice is they'll kind of join up on their own and your hole will disappear. And the same thing will happen to the bottom ones. You just have to be careful here that you don't end up with like a ridge or a part that doesn't look nice and smooth from the bottom of the A up towards our swoosh. So the first thing we'll do is try to join them together. And like I said, see how we're getting this like weird kind of angle there? We can try manually to bring these in. There they go. And get them a little more smooth just like that and now when we select the outside of our A and the inside of our A we can say object make compound path and if I wanted to fill this with color you will see how nice and smooth that swoosh looks at the end so yay those are all the edits I did to this design so let me get rid of the stuff that we ended up playing around with and not using. Put that all over there. And if I select this whole thing and make the colors all that nice royal blue, you will be able to see how they look almost identical now. And all I've done is a few really basic tweaks. So I tilted the letters a little bit. I pulled down on some of the swooshes so that they weren't all so precisely uniform. And I wasn't afraid to combine two fonts into the same word. So remember, the N and the N and the A were the, what was it called, Hello Honey font. And the A, the capital A, is the Wilshiring font. And the tail on the lowercase a is just the tail from the capital A that I chopped off 
and duplicate it over on the other side. And so this is a great way for you to take just a basic font and a basic text and really add some dimension to it so it looks a little bit more dynamic on your signs. Thanks so much for stopping by, guys.